What's going on, y'all? It's your favorite auntie Mo, and I am back for another episode review of Love After Lockup, y'all. This is season two, episode 45, Bonded and Ghosted. As always, before we get into this review, church announcements. If you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to your auntie channel. Now, what is you waiting on? I'll be bringing y'all that good shit. Before you leave, let me know that you stopped by. Give me a thumbs up or thumbs down, and then hit that notification bell so you will know whenever I upload new content. Y'all, let me before y'all even start going in on me about my hair, look here. I washed it, I blow dried it, and that's all I did to it. You know, um, don't judge me. It is what it is. That's why we're going to pull it back. We're going to rock it out, and we're going to make it do what it do. Y'all, it was a lot going on this episode. It was a lot going on, a lot of moving parts with all the couples. Hopefully, y'all are ready for this review. I got my mango banana green tea. Bitch, what keto? I've been drinking the shit out these damn green teas. Whoo! Lord, well, they damn good. Hopefully, y'all are ready for this review because I'm ready to give it to you. Let's go ahead and get right into it, y'all. Y'all, so let's pick up. Um, well, let's go ahead and pick up where it left off last time, right? With Cheryl and uh, Mama Josh and Mama Josh smacking the shit out of Cheryl. Now, when you go back and, and they replay it, you get to listen to it. It wasn't as bad as Cheryl makes. She made it seem she haul off smack shit out of her. She probably just, you know, popped a real good one, comes out like, bitch, watch your mouth. That's probably how she did her. She probably didn't just pimp smack her ass the way she made it seem like it was. But um, when they, when they played it back, and Shirley even said it, the little boy spilled some water. She says, come on here, let's go clean it up. And Cheryl gets pissed off. It's like, my son is three. You ain't got to tell him what to do. Blah, blah, blah. Mom, Cheryl said, I'm just trying to teach him something. I'm like, uh, bitch, <laughs> Somebody got to teach his goddamn son something. Obviously, it doesn't sound like it was all bad the way Cheryl made it seem like it was. Not saying the mom was just fine, smack shit out of her, but then again, you are in her house. So, it's certain rules and regulations that you got to live by. Yeah, I mean, it's just what it is. So, um, Josh is, is nervous. He caught in the middle. He don't know what the hell to do. He got this little nervous laugh. If y'all watch his ass, he got this nervous laugh that he does, especially when it comes to his mom and Cheryl, because he don't know. He said they both bullheaded, they both stubborn as hell, and <laughs> he, he just trying to stay out the middle of the shit. He like, God damn, my mama smacking this bitch. This bitch come crying to me. I'm sick of both you bitches. Cheryl ass gonna have the nerve to say his mama can't even keep her own kids out of prison, but she want to tell me what to do with mine. Bitch, you pursued him, so what does that say about you? You want a nigga that can't stay out of prison. But is that supposed to be an insult to him? Like, really, bitch? I mean, okay. It is what it is. Mama Josh walking around the house like, ain't shit happen. She ain't even phased by the shit. <laughs> like, she, she smacked bitches every day. Twice on Sunday. She don't care. Child, she going around picking up the baby. All right, mama, you ready to go? Mm -hmm. Nah, nah, sure do love you, baby. It is what it is. All right, Josh. I see you and your big head bitch later. Hopefully that hoe be gone by the time I get back. So you want to see her. She leave on up out of there like ain't a goddamn thing happened. Josh sitting there like he don't know what to do. Cheryl sitting there in the house. Back in the house after you set up there talking all that shit. How you done? How you leaving? And you fit to do this and that and the other. But you went and bought your ass back on the couch. Bitch, shut up. You ain't going no goddamn well. <laughs> you ain't going nowhere. Y'all, next up, we got Brittany and Marcelino. Now, she and him are on their way to go see the same lawyer that helped her in her case to get her son, Giovanni. The lawyer's name is Chris. I believe that's uh, who it was. They've been going to see him to possibly talk about. She wants to pursue finding her other two kids that she um, had to give up for adoption when she was young. She said her son is 13 and her daughter is 11. I don't know how old they were, or at least I missed that if they did say how old they were when she had to put them up for adoption but um she was in prison at the time so she didn't have a say in actually putting them up for adoption so she wants to go through the steps of you know seeing how she can locate her kids whoop -de whoop yada 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 so the lawyer is telling her that basically you know you have a right to those court documents or those court record or records to you know see what the case was and all of this but there's no guarantee that a you'll be able to locate them and b once you do locate them what the parents are going to say if you're even, you know, if you're even going to be able to talk to them. So 
you know, they just talk about how it's it's going to be an even bigger fight than it was to try to get custody of Giovanni trying to find these kids. Marcelino say he's on a downswing for playing poker. Nigga, all the more reason why you need to get your little monkey ass out here and get a doggone job. Now, look here, Marcelino. You, wanna, you and Brittany's relationship is one of the ones I really love out here. So, nigga, don't, don't get offended when I say this to you. But, nigga, you need a job, J-O-B, a for, for real, for real job. Unless you done hit one of them meals on that poker, baby, don't, don't rely on that. That to be your only source of income. You got babies coming. And who's to say them the only babies that you're gonna have coming? You know, just get on your shit, Marcelino. I want better for you, bruh. Andrew and Lamar, y'all. So they in a little freaky deaky shop or whatever. I was like, oh, this is my kind of episode, right? You know what we talking about, girl. <laughs> Now, her little inner freak started to come out once she got up in that, that store or whatever, right? Now, mind you, Lamar is still restricted to sleeping on the couch, but she wants to go up in a little freaky deaky store because she's trying to find her little B.O.B. That's a battery-operated oper boyfriend. Mm, one of them, you know what I'm saying? It might be kids watching this, so I don't want to say the for real, for real, even though I cuss like a motherfucker. <laughs> still, y'all know what I mean by that. But, um... She says, let me tell you what this heifer said that, that took me all the way the hell out. She says, when you reach that certain level of ecstasy, it's like being close to Jesus. I said, oh, y'all, mm-mm, nah, I ain't finna touch, y'all ain't finna make, I ain't finna, I ain't finna, y'all ain't finna make me, I'm not finna touch that, I'm not, nope, nope. I'm not finna touch that. Nope. She looking at all the dominatrix stuff, the whips, the chains, the handcuffs, all of that. She looking at the, the ones that twirl while they got this going and all of that going. I was like, ooh, yes, girl, yes. <laughs> He's excited. Lamar thinking he finna get it in. You know what I'm saying? That's what I've been waiting on, nigga. I've been waiting for her to be coming up and, 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 and let that inner Mormon freak on up out of her because she was having a good... A funky good time on up in that doggone store. I was like, all right, you like the auntie all up in the store. <laughs> Let me shut the hell up. But um, little does Lamar know, she's like, look here, that nigga still finna be sleeping on the damn couch while I up in the bedroom with my door locked with my little B.O.B., minding my own damn business, <laughs> trying to get closer to Jesus. Later on, y'all, this shit was funny as hell. She's having scripture reading at her house. So her homegirls, two of her homegirls, and, and one of them, the, the child, that nigga, remind, he gives me straight up children of the corn vibes. Like Malachi from children of the corn vibes. He's real like, like the boy. You know what I'm saying? Like, come to the light. Don't you want to come to the light? Real fucking creepy. Now, Lamar ain't with it. Y'all know this nigga ain't trying to convert to be no Mormon. He ain't got no Mormonism. He's straight low. Straight low, that gangster said tripping banging. And he don't appreciate that she trying to force her Mormonism off on him. He like, ooh, ooh, look, at I got the blue nails. Straight low, that. Look here. Don't nobody come for me trying to shoot my ass. I just wanted a different color. <laughs> I don't want no smoke from no Pyru, no Suwu, no Lok, <laughs> no, no Crip Crip, none of that. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't want none of the fucking smoke. So they all sitting down at the table talking, and Malachi tries to read him this scripture, like just open up your mind and, and listen to to the to the what the book has to say to you. So he reading this little scripture. The whole time he read the scripture, I'm like, uh-huh. Yeah, I'm listening to you. But hold up though. Before 1978, niggas wasn't even allowed to worship in Mormonism. It was it was banned. We can't even do that. He's into African, like, ancient history. Shit, he can track back to his peoples. He's one of them black, blacker than black because I'm black ass niggas. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? Hey, more power to you. But that's that's his religion and what he believes because he can track that back to his ancestries and to his peoples and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? He ain't trying to be no Mormon. Now, Andrea's whole thing is like, I understand the whole issue with the race, but like she says, before... 
that she was broken and she was battered and, and, and abused and, and woe and, and all of this. And she feels like the Book of Mormon like fed her soul and gave her everything that she needed. And Lamar was like, I'm cool with that. I get that. But look here, it ain't for me though, loke. That's all I'm trying to say. One of her homegirls is like, well, look here, let me, let me explain something to you. Let me try to tell you something. So she reaches out and tries to touch him. Lamar like, whoa. Bitch, you ain't got to touch me. Calm down. I get it. Homegirl gone. Okay, I'm sorry. Double tap like she finna do it again. Bitch, what? Now, he the, if he the hold off and knocked all the mayonnaise up out your ass and tomato soup, you'd have been mad as hell. But he was cool on your ass. Listen, I'm like that too. I'm one that I have to have my personal space. And if I tell you to back up out of my space and you feel the need like you want to double tap and come in again, we're going to have a problem. We gonna, Oh, we're going to have some problems. And Lamar was like, look here. I don't want to knock an old lady out. You know what I'm saying? Because me, you know, I can't go back to prison. But oh, I choked shit out your ass. I said, don't touch me now. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. So Lamar's like, look here. I done said, I said what the hell I done said. Can I be excused? He gets up and he leaves from that. And of course, Andrea, she cries. She just like, I don't want to have to get a divorce. But he promised me that he was going to do this. Look here. Not saying nothing against Lamar, but um, niggas make a lot of promises when they in prison. Especially if you sending them shit. I'm just saying. Lamar don't seem like he a bad dude, but that nigga looked out gangster set tripping and banging and you been doing this. You been doing this. But now all of a sudden you want to be a Mormon? That's not going to happen, boo. Ooh. Oh, Lord Jesus, y'all. Clinton got his Lord. First of all, why they got to play this old sad ass country music every time they bring up Clinton and his goddess? It's just sad and long, no, no. Why you leave me home? I mean, it's just sad. The music just, whew, it just take it out. Paul Clint said he lost. He's lost without Tracy, and, and God damn it, he got to do what he got to do to get her on up out the joint because he ain't right if he ain't got his goddamn goddess. So, child, Clinton goes over to mama house. He goes up in the house. He said, you know, like a broke dick dog. First of all, mama and them house is laid. Baby, that house is beautiful. The laundry room was popping. I'm like, damn, Clint, mama and them got it like that. He goes up in the house. He's like, yeah, mama, so uh, I just want to let you know that uh, I done decided I'm going to go ahead and get my, 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 my girl on up out the joint. I know you don't want to hear, but it's $5,000 and I'm going to have to spend to get, get my goddess on up out the clinker. So I'm going to do it. Mama say, what the fuck, Clint? Clint, Lauren, Clint. Well, what's it going to take, Clint? The bitch did this two, two years. It's been two years. It... it it was, it's only a couple months. And see, am, am I wrong? Two years? I'm oh like, God damn. My, mom said, you ain't been with the bitch two years, and she did this two years ago. Clint, what makes you think, Clint, that she's not going to do it again? Clint, I love you, but me and your dad ain't going to be there for you no more, Clint. I don't want to call you dumb, but you're fucking stupid, son. Now, Clint is convinced that this is going to be Tracy's last time. He's going to talk to her about rehab. Shit finna be good between them. Mom ain't finna have to have nothing to worry about. Mom's like, look here, Clint. I just want you to know. When this bitch fuck you over again, you can't come back to me and your dad because we ain't going to help you out with that, okay? You just going to be up shit creek without a paddle. You just going to have to figure that shit out, Clint. I'm sorry. You just going to have to figure it out. Clint's all right, Mom. I got to do what I got to do to get my goddamn goddess. I mean, it is what it is. Child, later on, we see he actually does go and bail her out, but she wanted privacy. Two weeks later, they invite the production crew to come back there to the house. Child, they laid up in a cracky room with some cracky looking dogs on some cracky looking goddamn. Who they just look. Mmm. Hot goddamn messes. Tracy says she does want to get help, so hopefully she gets goddamn help. Um. <laughs> She at least got to make it to her. Tracy, at least make it to the court date so my nigga can get his five 
grand back. Like, at least do that part right. Make it to, to court so this nigga get his five grand back. After you do with that bitch, that's on you. But look here, Clinton, if she do that again, you just gonna have to let this bitch go. Angela and Tony, baby. Angela got her little red fucking girl dress on. She about to go have her some drinks with Donna Frey, Brenda and Tommy. Tony, I done had enough for your shit. I'm finna go have some drinks with my bitches and I don't want her shit you gotta say. Tony like, can I come with you? Damn, you got your fucking girl dress on. Can I come with you? I like your people too. She's like, nigga, they don't even like you, Tony. It's some damn rules. You stay your ass here. You stay on that goddamn house. Don't go no further than the front porch. And I'll be back when I'm fucking back is what the fuck it is. He like, damn, okay. Well, can you at least tell me when you finna come home so I can be ready for you? Laid up on the couch, butt neck or something. I mean, damn, like, help a nigga out. She's like, why? See, hurt him run home before I do, Tony. No, I don't know. And I'm not going to tell you if I did know it because I don't know. So you just be back when I'm back. You're like, all right, then fine, fucking shit. Gone out there with charm girls with your little red fucking girl dress on. She was getting that shit. To try, as soon as she gets to the goddamn bar, of course they sit down and they start going in on Tony ass. Now, I didn't know best friend Brenda, she hadn't met Tony just yet. She, I'm, I'm so, she said she anxious to meet this motherfucker because I done heard, oh, so many damn things about him. I know she ready to go in on his ass when she see him. Now, immediately, she starts looking at her phone, looking at her goddamn tracker, trying to track his every move and see what the hell he doing because she got a goddamn tracker on his phone. And so, down the face like, bitch, look here. How about you come, you stay the night over at my house. You pull a him on his goddamn ass. You don't show back up at home. Make this nigga think about and worry about where the hell is you at. And for a minute, seem like she gonna do a child. As soon as they get outside, she done changed her goddamn mind. Now I think I'm gonna go home. Donna Faye, I'm just gonna go home because I don't wanna, I, I just, and imagine him laying in the bed with a crack whore and I don't want to have to shut the block down. Don, I don't want to have to do it, so I'm going to go home. So, child, she ends up going home, pulls up in front of the house, calls him and like, yeah, I had a good time in my fucking girl dress, so I'm just going to spend the night at Don Faye's house. Tony gives shit. He was like, okay, all right, well, um, see you when I see you. She stays parked outside the house, chain smoking them, carting them Benson and Hedges, Waiting to see this nigga. She gonna have the nerve to say when you got a cheating ass, scamming ass, punk ass boyfriend, sometimes you gotta catch his ass. No, you don't. You gotta leave his ass the hell alone and stop stressing yourself out. You giving yourself, you giving your wrinkles wrinkles. Chain smoking these goddamn cigarettes. Worried about goddamn Tony ass and he ain't worried about you. Girl, bye. I'm, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not even finna do that. Angela, big Ange. You got too much good shit going on for you, girl. Fuck him. Megan, Michael, and Sarah, y'all. So we got Megan. She's at the park meeting up um, with her good, good Judy B. You know, that's her best friend. B got body, yaddy, yaddy. You better go, B. I was like, look at me. He's like one of them good, good girlfriends that will chop it up with you, give you the real straight no chaser, and I love a good, good girlfriend like that. So they at the park, you know, working. She said she done ate up all them lies that Mike said, so she had to work it out. I like that. I really did like that. So, B is just basically giving her solid advice, like, okay, well, look here. You done got the nigga out your system. Now it's time to move the fuck on, get yourself together, get your groove back, Stella, and you can move the hell on from him. Now, Megan ass, Megan, oh, girl, you too beautiful for this. She says, oh, she says she still feels like they have chemistry and they have history and she doesn't believe that he's really out here talking with other women. Now, of course, this is when they filmed that. Now, pause for the cause. I was on YouTube, uh, what was it, last night or this morning? What was, what was that? It had to have been earlier today I was on it, but I had seen this live that Megan had where Megan was actually going in like... <laughs> She's moved on. Let's just say that her and Michael are no longer together. So, again, this is when they were filming. This is what she was feeling and all that. But I was just like, girl, mm -mm. Now, we have Sarah at the house with her girls. Now, she has not told her oldest daughter, Aviana, that Michael is coming. She says if he comes, he comes. If he doesn't, fuck it that way. The baby won't be upset because she didn't know either way. Because she's afraid that he might end up standing her up. In the case he doesn't show up, whatever. She don't want the baby to be upset or whatever, right? Now, at the same time, Mike gets to the hotel with his new bitch we meet. Her name is Maria. Older chick. Mike says that he likes a woman that he can tell I want to have threesomes and she going to be okay and be down with it. She 
he expects that and that basically let's just call a spade the hell what the what the hell it is he got an older sugar mama that's dumb enough to put up with his dumb shit his dumb young nigga shit and she paying for it and for whatever reason she okay with that i'm sorry i i i i i i i hate to down another female but what i didn't like about this is that she said, I'm not worried about Megan because she's a sea creature, but what I am worried about is a bullshit between him and Sarah. Now, first of all, you ain't met Megan or Sarah, so you don't even personally know what BS they got going on, but if you were smart enough, you would see, okay, this nigga got cameras around him. Let me check out his history, see what the hell it is about his ass, and you will see what kind of fuck boy he really is before we sit up there and pass judgment on his mother, the mother of his children, and the girl who... Didn't know anything else about what was going on. Them bitches don't know you just like you don't know them bitches. I'm sorry, y'all. I had to stick up for them for a minute. Y'all know I'm not Team Megan or Team Sarah, but what I am is Team Bitch Don't Come For Them because they ain't fit for you. That's whose team I'm on. But for her to say that, and why why Megan got to be a sea creature, bitch? Why, why she got to be a sea creature? Some would say you don't favor much. I don't see no Disney character when I look at you. I don't see no Disney princess when I look at you. But, but we, 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 that's neither here nor there. I'm sorry, y'all. That upset at me for a minute. It really did. And if you say you ain't here for the BS with Sarah, you ain't here to deal with her bullshit, this and the other girl. She been dealing with bullshit for a minute now. Now, if y'all have had run-ins before, the thing showed on the show, look here, auntie will eat all her words. I apologize. I will stay the hell out of it. But if you ain't met this female, this female ain't met you. Y'all ain't had no kind of communication. Y'all know about each other, but you already passing judgment on her. Girl, you can kick rocks with open toe shoes because you sitting up here getting played by a fuck boy with no edges. And then, and then... And then she going to say the marriage between Michael and Sarah is just on paper. But emotionally, me and Mike are married. You sound stupid. I'm not calling you stupid. I'm saying the words that came out your mouth was real stupid. That's it. That's all. Moving on from that. So Mike gets to the crib, right? He pulls up in the car. Now... Sarah is sitting on the front porch holding a baby girl. Aviana is playing at her little pool. Soon as Mike pulls up, as he before he even gets out of the car, Sarah is telling Aviana, come over here, come here, come here, come over here, come over here. She sees Mike gets out of the car. Immediately, she runs over to Sarah and she just starts bawling, breaking down, and crying. And y'all, whoo, that was so sad to watch. That was so sad to see. Mike couldn't understand and I couldn't understand either, like, why was why would she break down like that? Because we've seen on previous episodes before, that baby girl love her daddy. She, as fuck boy as he is, that baby girl loves her damn daddy. And that's the way it's been on every episode. Yes, she's smart enough to understand, and she's also smart enough to hear conversations that go on around her. Now... When they were finally able to calm her down and talk to her, Sarah's asking her, like, what's going on? Michael's like, what's wrong, pretty girl? What's going on? She's like, I love my daddy, but I'm just worried that he's going to take me. She, what, three, four years old? Why would she be worried that you're going to take her? Now, keep in mind, we did see a scene when Sarah was at her attorney's office and she said, so you mean to tell me that with his rights, he can come and get my kids and I won't see him for months and months and months? Did that baby girl hear you and your strong-faced and manly friend talking about that? Why would that baby girl automatically think something like that? Oh my God, here's my daddy. He's going to take me away. As opposed to, oh my God, here's my daddy. I haven't seen him in a long time. Let me go play with him. But I did pick up when she finally warmed up and she played with him. You know, she went and go, girl, it was so damn cute. When she was crying and was trying to calm her down. And Sarah's like, you don't want to go play in the water with that? She's like, well, I ain't going to be in suit on. Child, it reminded me of my goddamn niece. I call my niece Dramatica. Because that is some shit that my niece would do just dramatic for no reason. I'm already crying some shit. Let me just add this shit into the cry too. Fuck up and be mad for everything. That is my niece too. <laughs> MT. So when she's out there and she's playing with him, she says, oh, I'm getting used to him. 
that was hurtful to hear too because Mike, that should let you know right there. She getting used to being back around you because you ain't been around in two damn months. You said out your mouth two months. My son drive me batshit crazy, but goddamn, I drop his ass off at, 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 at 730. By 12 o'clock, I'm missing his worsome ass. I can't imagine two months not seeing my baby. Lord have mercy, no. So she ends up calling her grandmother. Her grandmother ends up coming to pick up the kids. Afterwards, they sit down and talk. That's when Sarah's black scent comes out, y'all. So what you still doing here? <laughs> Fucking black scent. Ooh, that irritates the hell out of me. He was like, well, I just want to know what's up, you know, see when I can take him. And she was like, what you mean when you can take him? You can't just disappear and then come back and, and treat me like any kind of way. And I'm supposed to be good to you. That's how it is, my girl. That's how it works. He like, look here. I understand you upset. I'm just trying to see when I can see my kids, how I can make this work. Whoop de whoop, yada yada yada. She was like, I hope you got some place to stay. He was like, Yeah, I do. Oh, so did you come alone? <laughs> I hate it when uh, did you, so did you come alone? He was like, uh, no. I came with this big head bitch that I'm fucking with now. And so what? So you mean to tell me you want to come and take my kids and take them to the hotel with a whole nother bitch? Now I was with Sarah right there. Um, no, no, no. Mm-mm. You're not going to pick up my kids and take them to a bit. No. Nigga, you can stay here and you can play. Y'all can have tea parties and all of that shit. But you're not going to and take them around some random bitch. Y'all see how many kids is go dying off left and right by them being left with strangers that's supposed to be their mama's boyfriends or their daddy's girlfriends. No, no. That ain't how we do that around here. So, she ends up getting pissed off. Mike is like, basically, you just upset because you can't control me no more. whoop de whoop yada, yada, yada. Y'all, the episode ends from there. Now, on the next episode, her and Maria are supposed to meet up. That's when we can find out some more history on the ship that's, that, you know, what's, what's going on with it, y'all. But pretty much the episode ended from there. Um, it was a lot going on. It felt like a lot of moving parts with this. But, um, y'all already know, if it was anything that I missed, drop it down. Uh, drop it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, I'm going too fast. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And your auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's going on, y'all? Look here. If you like this video, do me a favor. Give me a thumbs up. Share this video. Comment on this video. All of that good stuff. And if ain't nobody else told you today, I sure enough love you. And I sure enough appreciate you.